Good evening, everyone. It's Councillor Ray here. I uh, hope you're now seeing uh, this live stream. Uh, if you've just joined me, it's uh, Councillor Ray here, one of the councillors for Hunslet and Riverside Ward. I had a bit of a technical glitch there uh, where the um, predetermined start time decided not to work for some reason. So uh, I apologise if uh, anyone's been waiting for a couple of minutes for this to start. I have no idea how many people are watching. So with the uh, issue of coronavirus cancelling a lot of our public meetings, well, all of them, um, a lot of the traditional ways we engage with our communities via residence meetings, community forums, etc., have all now stopped and are stopped for potentially a reasonable amount of time. Now, as your elected councillor, I still have a, a duty to try and engage with you as residents to understand uh, your ongoing needs and concerns, trying to address those even during these difficult times, and make sure that you have the ability to scrutinise what we do as council. So the idea of this, if anyone is watching, is to really post questions, uh, ask me uh, what's um, happening in the world and hopefully for us to try and address some of your concerns. So I'd be very grateful if anyone is listening uh, for them to uh, post questions accordingly. What I will do when I'm here, however, is just give you a, a very quick update on where we are in terms of issues in the ward and particularly our response to the coronavirus uh, epidemic. So, uh, as you've probably seen from uh, Facebook and social media, the council has been doing uh, quite a considerable amount of work around this to try and get the city prepared. Uh, we've uh, launched um, some advice pages at uh, leads.gov.uk forward slash coronavirus and leads.gov.uk forward slash coronavirus forward slash business uh, to deal with both resident and community issues and business and self-employed matters. Uh, they are getting updated on a regular basis with the announcements from the government and our response as a council. So please do uh, have a look at those and I will put a link to them uh, in the comments at the end of this video. Uh, we've now launched our emergency uh, referral system uh, in conjunction with the volunteer network set up uh, with voluntary action leads. And we have two designated hubs here in Hunslet and Riverside Ward, the Involve Centre in Hunslet and Tamara on Beeston Hill. And they have now received a list of volunteers and will be receiving referrals for assistance to try and help the residents who are self-isolated, don't have access to food, uh, medication, etc. And to get that volunteering network set up. Now, while I am waiting to see if I do get uh, any questions from anyone, um, there are a couple of other things I just want to maybe address that I've had as pre-questions. So, playgrounds. Uh, as you'll be aware, the government announced uh, that all playgrounds should be closed and the uh, council got there pretty much at the same point. Now, we do have some issues with some of our smaller playgrounds outside of the main parks where they have very low access fences or uh, not really able to be closed off. Um, these have been raised with parks and country and with West Yorkshire Police. West Yorkshire Police will add some of these to their patrol routes, particularly uh, Hunslet Moor Playground uh, and a few of the hotspots that I've highlighted to them. Um, it's not a perfect scenario. It will require the police to be there and they, they're obviously stretched at the moment as well. Uh, there were some issues raised uh, around uh, the H2010 to Leeds Dock footpath. Uh, I got a message about that just before this video went live. Uh, obviously a very popular route for uh, people to exercise on, uh, fishing etc. Now the government's advice is very clear that activities should be limited to exercise so fishing and magnet fishing i'm afraid is not exercise um and social distancing should still be uh, adhered to so based on that i have had to pass that on to the police to make sure that they are patrolling that part of the ward as well uh, as killjoys it may be we have to maintain those rules so to the fishers and to the magnet fishers, I, I apologise. If you are congregating there, you do need to not be sitting uh, on the towpath uh, doing such activities. Um, other issues raised as well uh, around littering. 
Uh, now, the council has had to make the decision to limit its uh, litter bin collection activity. Uh, first of all, because our clean and neighbourhood team have had a lot of people go off uh, on self-isolation because of symptoms of family members. And we are prioritising black and green bin collections to make sure that waste is collected in the city. So please do try to limit your use of the council's litter bins on the street. Uh, do try to take the waste that you do have home and use your your own bin facilities just to basically make sure that actually we're not collecting waste in those areas unnecessarily that might not get collected. Uh, I've had some questions around litter picking, uh, quite an interesting one, uh, whether it's okay to go and uh, litter pick by yourself and whether those um, bags of litter will be collected. Uh, short answer is no, they won't be collected. Um, because again, cleaning neighbourhoods are prioritising uh, work with the refuge team and essential uh, work removing dangerous fly tipping, etc. So again, if you do go out to litter pick by yourself, please don't leave it next to a Leeds City Council litter bin. It's not a guarantee it'll be picked up. If you do insist on going out to litter pick by yourself, then we would ask that you limit the amount that you collect and you take it to your own personal uh, litter bin. Now, I can see you've still not got any questions from anyone, which is a uh, Not any burning questions in Huntsman and Riverside. Uh, perhaps I promoted this video a little too late. Um, so, you know, maybe this is going to be a really short video uh, by the sounds of it. So does anyone have any questions for me that they would like to raise? I'll give you a couple of minutes. No? Yes? Let's have a look. Right, someone has sent me a question via um, private message um, in relation to uh, price hikes at shops. So I think I raised this in a previous video about a week ago. Um, trading standards uh, are aware that there are complaints about certain premises um, increasing prices. Now, it's a really complex area uh, to enforce on. Uh, first of all, we need to check that those prices are inflated. Uh, second of all, there might be legitimate reasons. So it's not always necessarily profiteering. Um, so trading standards are investigating them where appropriate, but it is it's quite difficult to prove. The trader could quite easily say that their suppliers increased the price by X amount. It has particularly impacted uh, communities that need specialised uh, food, so halal, etc. Uh, but it is being monitored, but it is very difficult to deal with. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, apparently, people don't want to put on the live feed. They're sending to me uh, via Twitter and via Facebook in message instead. Let's have a look. How long do you think the lockdown will be? Um, I have literally no idea. Uh, the government has said three weeks. Um, we'll see what happens uh, if it lasts longer. I'm not going to make any comments as to what I think is going to happen in that sense. Uh, I'm as I'm as uh, stuck at home as you are in in that regard. Uh, let's have a look. Is there anything? Um, can the police fine us if we are caught outside? So, yes, so the police uh, received emergency powers yesterday and those emergency powers allow them to uh, stop cars, uh, stop individuals on the street to ask them what they are doing, uh, particularly groups of more than two people. Uh, if they believe the reason why you're out is unreasonable, they have the right to ask you to go home uh, or to issue a fine. Uh, depending on the response you give and they actually ultimately have the power to um, arrest you now the police don't want to use these powers it's not in their interest they've got a hard enough job as it is on limited staff so you know let's try not to do that it is really important you do follow these guidelines this is a, a really infectious uh, virus it's about two three times more infectious than the common flu uh, so, again, might not be the most popular thing to say, but please do follow the government's guidelines. The police will be enforcing this. Uh, there's no point in pretending they're not. They've been given the powers for a reason. 
Uh, let's have a look. Any other questions? Why are construction workers still doing work? Why are lead city council workers still out and about? Okay, uh, interesting one. So the two dimensions to this. Um, nationally, the government has gone to the developer industry, uh, the building industry, still work. Um, I personally think that's very dubious. It's very hard on a construction site uh, to avoid people, even with a, a degree of social distancing. So, you know, let's see what happens there. In terms of Leeds City Council workers, um, I mean, I've seen a few comments on Facebook as well. People saying they don't think the, some of the work being done is essential. Now, what I would say is, for example, if someone's repairing a dropped curb, now that might not seem essential to say me, uh, who's quite mobile. But actually, to someone who needs to go out shopping, who's got limited mobility, or in a, um, a buggy, or maybe even someone trying to cross the street with their children in a pram that is actually quite essential now in fairness most council workers are literally dealing with repair work so we will look at issues when that's raised but if they're out and about working in the related to council worker it is because it is essential work it might not be essential to you but it's probably essential to another part of the council or to uh, another member of the public Oh, I have a Facebook question. Hello, Ruth. Let's have a look, see what you've put. Do you think there will be any bin collection issues? I, I worry about garden waste, etc., and the risk of fly tipping with uh, tip shut. So we have stopped all garden waste collections. Um, we are asking residents to basically uh, limit the amount of garden uh, waste they produce over this. So if you can, try not to cut the grass. Uh, try not to prune bushes if, if you can avoid it. If you have to, we're suggesting composting, which is always good for the environment. Um, going forward, a lot's going to depend on sickness rates and isolation rates. So there is a potential risk uh, of impact. We are working at the moment. Uh, most bins are still being collected on time at schedule. The council has been really good at redeploying staff from other departments. Uh, particularly clean the neighbourhoods to prioritise that. So in short, garden waste is not going to get collected, so I won't even try and put it out. In terms of uh, other bin collections, that's all really going to be dependent on how much sickness and self-isolation we get. So I hope that sort of answers the question. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, another question via uh, a direct message to me on Facebook, domestic violence. Yeah, uh, this is potentially one of the really, really concerning side effects of, of the self-isolation uh, that we're having to go through our social distancing. And it is something that the police are aware could become an issue. If you're forcing households to stay together, particularly where there are potentially very toxic relationships, the likelihood of domestic violence increases. I don't think we should pretend that it's not going to. Um, the police are aware that that's potentially going to become a very big uh, stream of operational work for them. Um, there is uh, a lot of guidance uh, out there on support uh, for people that are victims of domestic violence. Again, I appreciate it is potentially going to be harder to access that uh, while people are at home. Uh, but there is support there. Um, I'm worried about it. I know a lot of people are worried about it. But we will, or should I say, the police will endeavour to do everything they can do. And, this, and many of the support networks for people who are suffering domestic violence are still operating, though they are operating uh, obviously on a more remote uh, model. Um, have a look at something else. I forgot. So another question, and this has actually come in via email while I've been speaking. Um, should we volunteer via the Val volunteer system, or can we do it ourselves? So, um, we set up a volunteer network uh, via our partners, Voluntary Action Network here in Leeds, uh, really just to get scale 
uh, Val are experts at the voluntary sector um, and to try and get some coordination. Now, anyone that works via the council approved scheme uh, will get appropriate support and training and advice and will be covered uh, by our, our liability insurance effectively. This doesn't prevent other groups from going out and do things. Uh, it's completely legitimate to do that. Everybody wants to help at the moment, but those groups need to be aware that they're not, they're gonna have to cover themselves for liability. So pros and cons, uh, our structured system, probably not as much freedom to do what you particularly like to do, but you get the support, you get the training, you get the help, uh, you get the cover in case anything goes wrong do it on your own uh more flexible you can choose what your priorities are but particularly if you're an organization or a small charity you're gonna have to look at your own liability insurance so you know just bear that in mind i mean what i would say is the, the volunteer effort in here least has been frankly inspiration i think we're well over four thousand people have uh, signed up to the voluntary action lead scheme uh, not to say what people have signed up to the national scheme, so I think everybody should be really, really proud of that. Oh, another question on Facebook leave. Hi, Paul. Uh, hi, first of all, hello, Sandra. Hi, Paul. Are council tenants going to get any rent or council tax relief free rent weeks as homers are getting a free month break? Uh, really interesting uh, question, this. So, a lot of this is in the hands of the government so the government implemented the three month uh holiday tax break for um mortgage repayments for homeowners um they've also though i don't think it's actually gone into legislation quite yet uh they did say obviously as uh, around trying to prevent um evictions of private tenants and social tenants uh though i don't think that's quite gone into the legislation the way it was promoted but uh, that's something I'm sure will change as pressure from MPs get involved. In terms of what the council is doing, it's a really difficult one. There are some people, uh, myself for example, who can perfectly work at home and pay their rent. Uh, there are some people because of the closure of businesses that can't. So what we're saying to people is if you are in difficulty, and again I'll put the contact number in, uh, the comments uh, at the end of this is contact us. Um, we will look look a uh, very bespoke uh, process and program. We will look at your situation, and if you are in a position where actually you've just got no one coming in, you've uh, maybe been let off work, you've not been furlonged, so you're not getting eighty percent uh, support from your employer, uh, you've been put out of work, then we'll go for the options, and we will do what is right for you and make sure you get that support. The one thing we are going to say is anyone impacted who can't pay their rent due to the coronavirus is not going to be turfed out of their home if they're a lead city council tenant. Um, that's just not going to happen. But we will check means. So as I've said, someone who's on salary who maybe lives in a lead city council property, their probably argument that they can't afford their rent is probably a lot less unless they've suffered, say, a, a partner's lost a lot of income who's also there. So it may be that actually they do part payments. Uh, someone who's on full income like me, I would be probably expected to pay. Someone's completely lost their income, well then we're probably looking at rent uh, refer deferrals, etc. But it will be incredibly bespoke. So you have that conversation, we make sure it's right. And it's to make sure that actually we're giving the right support. Now, if government turns around in a week's time and goes, actually, we think everyone should have a rent break, and we'll pay for it, then obviously that's probably what will happen. I'm expecting that's not gonna come, or if it does come, it's a, it's a way off. So if you are in difficulty, get in contact, the same for council tax, get in contact with our call centers, they're still operating. They will basically look at your circumstances, and if you are in dire straits, they will make uh, adjustments accordingly. Uh, let's have a look. Is there anything else? Okay, I've got another one. Uh, Brenda, did I receive your message about playgrounds? I very quickly looked at it. Uh, I've not gone through it in full. I did say a little bit earlier in the video uh, about some of the playgrounds where they're very hard to lock off. 
I'll have a look at your comment in full. Now, let's actually have a look while I'm reading this. Let's see if it is there. Let's look at my inbox. Uh, the joy of multiple social media feeds. Uh, let's have a look. Brenda. Uh, I can't seem to see your question on my feed. Ah, Brenda, there we go. Right, I think, Brenda, I'm going to have to... Ah, there we go, you put into the Hunter's Brenda a little bit more. Uh, right, are the, uh, are the playgrounds uh, free to use, as is seeing a lot of activity in playgrounds? Only asking, as I'm sure, again. Yeah, so, I think, as I said in uh, earlier in the video, uh, all playgrounds are off limits as part of the rules. Uh, mainly because there are services contact. We don't know how long the virus lasts on some services and how contagious it is. Those smaller playgrounds where there are access issues because realistically you can just get over the fence. Uh, I've asked the police to put onto their patrol rounds. The honest answer is it is going to be very hard to enforce those smaller ones, but we will be trying our best. The larger ones are certainly going to be closed off and our parks and country team are busy getting around that now uh oh thank you for saying thank you uh there that's great um i apologize azara i hope i've pronounced your name correctly uh can i check our construction workers for the council still continuing i live on grange road and we are having fiber installed do you know when it will finish so the City Fibre Works are not Leeds City Council. Uh, they are an independent company. Uh, they have what's called statutory rights, which basically says they can apply to the council, which they did about six months ago, I think, because uh, it's a big scheme. They applied to the council. They have the right to access uh, the pavement uh, as long as they restore it. Now, this is the really big issue with the government's guidance. Government guidance at the moment is basically saying construction work can continue because we believe it's essential. There's a big argument of, uh, around that as to whether it is. In terms of Leeds City Council construction work, um, I think it's where particularly around our highway department, our parks and country department have stopped apart from absolutely essential health and safety repairs. The Leeds City Council team are also only doing essential. And I, I think I said, slightly earlier in the the video to a pre-question uh, pre i got a concern some of the works might not look essential uh but one of the reasons why some of them are is because it impacts vulnerable groups so for example um curb repairs particularly dropped curbs might not be essential to someone that's uh mobile uh without mobility problems but someone in a wheelchair a mobility scooter or with a pram actually being able to get safely across the road at a drop curb is actually quite important particularly around uh, big immunity spaces like supermarkets etc so in terms of city fiber i've got a feeling they probably won't stop until the government mandate to stop we as a council can't stop them because they have a statutory right to access that footpath um, in terms of council work, we are only doing what we're deeming to be essential for safety or access reasons. Anything else is being put on hold, uh, as far as I'm aware. But there are some major schemes that we've kind of already started. If we don't finish, we'll cause uh, other problems. Um, Simon, can you put forward to spend council tax? I'm not working at the moment. And also, what about Leeds Federated Properties? So in terms of council tax, um, it's, that's above my pay grade. And as I've said, the, the difficulty of this is some people are still going to be able to pay council tax because, as I said, an example is myself. I'm on salary. I therefore I'm still getting fully paid because I can work at home. What we've said, like we've said with people with um, rent who are maybe council tenants is if you are going to struggle or you're having difficulties, we are taking a very supportive approach. Ring us, speak to us. Uh, if there are going to be difficulties, we will have flexibility. And as an absolute extreme, we can discuss um, deferments. 
if the government turns around and says to us, council, great, you can, we don't need to have anyone to council tax because we'll pay the bill. I think we'll all agree that's a great thing. But from the council perspective, it is quite a large bit of our income. So what we're saying is those that can pay should pay. Um, those that can't are going to have difficulty. Speak to our council tax team. And basically, we're going to be extremely flexible. There's going to be no enforcement measures on this. We appreciate this is unprecedented. In terms of Leeds Federation property, really depends what you mean. Um, they are a private social landlord company. Again, they will probably be making exactly the same judgments on things like rent. It will be around a, a mechanism of, right, are you getting salary and working from home? Okay, that's maybe not something we would defer rent on uh, or council tax on. Uh, sorry, in that case, um, actually, you've lost all of your income. You've not been furlonged. What support do you need? So I don't think there's a one size fits all model to this, which is not the most simplistic way of doing it. But as I've said, if government gets in contact, then I think we have a a different situation there where maybe if they say we, they want to spend it, they'd have to cough up the money to allow us to do that. Uh, let's have a look if we've got anything else going. Uh, more questions. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, thank you for the thank you. That's nice. Uh, I've had another direct message around flight to pig. Okay, are you still picking up flight to pig? Yes and no. So there's a post really far down on my Facebook page about this, um, around exactly what we are and aren't doing. So our colleagues at uh, Civic Enterprise Leeds, that's the commercial arm of the council where we do our private businesses uh, to generate income on behalf of the people of the city. Um, they're still operating at the moment. That may may not change depending on their staffing levels. And what they will be doing is they will be proactively picking up fly tipping as they move about picking up uh, uh, bulk waste collection requests. Uh, our cleaner neighbourhoods team, uh, so that's the council street cleaning team, what they will be doing is pretty much uh, hazardous. So if there is a vineyard, for example, say on Beeston Hill, that's full of rubbish and could potentially be a fire hazard, they'll do that. If there's hazardous waste, they'll do that. Uh, if there's asbestos, uh, Civic Enterprise Leeds' team will go out and deal with that. So there are a few issues around that. So it's not quite straightforward. So we are doing what we deem to be hazardous flight in removal and Civic Enterprise Leeds is still doing uh, requested commercial charged removal. Uh, but again, that may change depending on levels of staffing. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm glad I almost got your name right. Thank you for that. Um, let's have a look. Any other questions coming through? Um, do, 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 do. Help for... Uh, okay, no, I just had another email question. Help for the uh, unemployed in Leeds. So if you go to uh, leeds.gov.uk forward slash coronavirus, uh, there's a section on there uh, around uh, being out of work. Uh, as you probably are aware, a lot of the supermarkets are doing very, very big recruitment drives at the moment. Uh, and there's a lot of support being given to try and help people get into those. Uh, a lot of people who were on the DWP work programs they're still getting remote support and again we're assisting with that um so we would just suggest you go and have a look at that now one of the issues people have brought up is if you've been furlonged and your employer's going to apply for the 80 percent grant from the government can you still go and do work in the meantime uh, answer to that is yes because the government won't be issuing that grant until april um Potentially, some businesses won't be able to pay their employees until they get that grant. So what's basically being said is you can still go out and work. And as long as you're on a furlong from your employer rather than being made redundant, you'll still get that uh, 80 or they'll get that 80% grant on your behalf. 
Uh, let's have a look. Any other questions on this? I hope everybody is finding this useful, actually, because I like I, I'm learning to use this for the first time as a live thing, and I and I hope it's beneficial. Because if it is, I'll I'll keep doing it. I'll do another one next week. Uh, let's have a look. Right, that looks like pretty much the questions people have for me at the moment have dried up. So, first of all, thank you. Uh, I hope that has been of some use. I apologize if I'm rambling. I'm trying to multitask between uh, different screens. I, I, I'll try and have a better setup for this um, next time. Uh, if you think this has been good, if you can say so in the comments, then that would be really good because then I'll do another one next week and I'll do some proper notice around it. Other than that, I'm available constantly on social media, on my phone, via email. Um, the council may be limiting its operations to emergency assistance at the moment, but we as your councillors are still here. So thank you very, very much for listening. I hope that's been useful. And again, let me know in the comments if you have think it's been useful, and then I'll do another one about this time next week. Keep safe, stay well and speak to you soon.